What's going on internet IG back again? I'm excited, it is Ubuntu release season. So we have 18.04 Bionic Beaver releases all across the desktop environments. And I polled you guys on Twitter and YouTube to ask you guys which desktop environments I should look into. And uh, the feedback came across loud and clear. We are interested in Plasma, Mate, and Budgie. So those are the three that I'm gonna focus on uh, in this particular release season of Ubuntu, being LTS releases and all. Um, if you haven't checked out my Ubuntu first impressions of the proper Ubuntu Bionic Beaver 18.04, you know, GNOME based release, then uh, I'll definitely chuck a card up in whichever corner that is, and you can go check that out. Um, but today we're gonna to be kicking it off with Kubuntu. Kubuntu, the KDE Plasma Desktop 5.12, that, uh, that is its own LTS release on top of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS release. So we should be up for something very, very stable. Um, I guess we'll see how we go. Kubuntu 18.04, let's check it out, what it has to offer us in 2018. All right, so Kubuntu 18.04, Bionic Beaver. So now, first of all, I wanna say, if, uh, if you're going to jump into this desktop and boot it up, you're gonna notice straight away that we may as well now be looking at KDE Neon, because honestly, it looks darn near identical. I think the only difference here is that you've got a slightly different start button icon down here. Um, so that is what it is. But what I will say is, um, I guess if I'm going to quickly, quickly recap some of the some of the main changes to Kubuntu since the last long-term support release of the Plasma desktop and thus Ubuntu, um, I guess I can quickly summarize it as best I can like this. So some of the new stuff that they've introduced since 5.8 um, is they have a, uh, a new way that you can customize the actual uh, application launcher here, which I think is great. If you don't wanna see all of these tabs all the time, I always thought it was a bit too clunky. You can jump in here and actually edit the uh, which buttons actually show up here and you can rearrange them based on what you most often use. Um, so that's a nice touch, I like to see that. Um, I'm also being told that uh, the notification tray is uh, a lot more powerful now. You can copy and paste text in between there, not to mention you've got a universal clipboard manager there as well. Um, now, the other nice thing is that I did touch on in um, in my KDE uh, Neon review is that the software center is actually um, a lot more polished now. Um, it does have support for Snap, for flat packs, and uh, and also apt URLs. Now I already did sing the praises of the um, of the Discover uh, Software Center already in the KDE Neon review, so feel free jump back and watch that. I'll have a link up in the cards. But what I do like to see in this is the fact that a it's responsive, b it gives you some good screenshots of most applications along with decent descriptions, um, and again great reviews here that we've got listed. Um, that are, again most of these only apply to the most popular um, applications out there. Um, but overall, I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, I don't know if it's finished yet. I think it could still do with a bit more work. Um, there is a little bit, um, I don't know, it, it's got a weird kind of design aesthetic to it compared to the rest of Plasma Desktop. So I don't really know what the story is there, but um, so yeah, it could do with a bit more polish, but it's a vast improvement from the last iteration of uh, the, Discover, um, uh, the Discover software manager. So. I like that. Now the other thing that I've noticed is um, is spring loading on the folder view. So by default, um, obviously to make KDE Plasma Desktop work for most people and uh, to make the ease the transition, um, you'll notice that when you drag and drop file file folders on top of each other, they kind of spring load out. So as you can see, you can bury into a folder just through drag and drop without having to open up a finder, uh, open up a dolphin window to make that work which I like to see because that it means more efficiency. That's fantastic. The other thing that I've noticed is uh, jump lists. So on the taskbar here, when you open up, uh, well, we'll just wait for Firefox to open here because you know, Firefox is Firefox, but you'll notice that uh, they, that depending on the application and what kind of support you have there, you do have the support for jump lists there. So for example, with uh, music, um, so with music players, for example, you can, uh, you know, skip tracks, mute, that kind of thing from the, uh, from the taskbar here, which I think is a nice touch. 
Um, again, all of these things, I guess we're expecting from modern um, desktop environments and from modern distributions. Um, but it's just good to see them here. Now, the other good thing that I really enjoy, uh, that I really have been enjoying, is the whole idea of a global menu setup. I'm a big fan of a global menu. I don't know why, it just seems to be more efficient for me. So let's just say, for example, let's chuck our panel on the top here, and then let's add a global menu widget. So by doing that, we just jump up here, search global menu, there it is, throw it onto the panel, and I. I think we're gonna to have to make some room here. And there it is. Look at that, crispy global menus. Now, the other thing that I would love to see, let me know in the comments below if this is actually possible, but um, a heads up display. I really, really miss that from Unity and I'm excited to see it in the Mate desktop, um, but I don't know if you can get it here in, uh, in Plasma, Plasma 5, um, because I absolutely love uh, KRunner. I think KRunner is amazing and it's got a lot going for it, um, but, I don't know if it supports uh, heads up display um, stuff. So just tapping the alt key and searching through the global menu for the command that you want. I think that's a really powerful feature and I'd love to see more of that in uh, in Plasma. Um, and again, it's probably it probably is an add-on that I'm just not aware of or, or I haven't found yet. So I could be a complete noob in saying all that. Anyway, um, the other thing that, uh, the, that the Kubuntu team are pretty proud of is the fact that there is uh, significantly faster boot up times with, um, with Plasma 5.12. Um, and uh, and that's good news always. Um, the other the other cool little feature that um, that uh, I found with Plasma was um, was vaults. Basically, it's a very easy way to uh, to have encrypted folders sitting there in your notification bar or in your toolbar. So you can create a new vault and simply dump all the stuff that you're working in there um, for your organization, business, whatever, that you don't want prying eyes to see straight off the bat. And you can dump them in there. It's very, very convenient. It's always running and it creates an encrypted file container that you can chuck all your stuff in. I think that's a nice touch, and especially in our privacy and, uh, and privacy and security aware society. I think that's a fantastic addition. Okay, so um, here's what I love about Kubuntu and, um, and what I've seen so far. So what I will say is I don't think it's as lean and mean as KDE Neon. I don't think it's as well optimized, but at the same time, you do get access to all of the fun stuff that Ubuntu offers uh, straight out of the bat without having to customize anything further. So um, as you can see, I've been opening a few things. Um, we're sitting at about almost a gig of RAM there, um, and uh, the CPU is not doing much at all, which is great. Um, now, that is a little bit stodgier than what uh, KDE Neon was running. So I guess the question then becomes, why would you choose to run Kubuntu 18.04 compared to KDE Neon, where you get the rolling up to date release? Um, for me, I think the support that you get on Kubuntu's side of things, because it's closely tied and is officially supported by Canonical and the whole Ubuntu family, um, I think you get a much uh, a much better supported distribution. So when it comes to software compatibility and all that kind of stuff, you're very unlikely to come across any red herrings of um, of uh, yeah I don't know just difficult software to to try and install um, when you're using something like Kubuntu over KDE Neon. Even though KDE Neon is based on Ubuntu's long-term support releases, so inevitably there will be a release that is based on this framework. Um, there is so much that is taken out of KDE Neon in terms of support libraries um, and uh, and even the software that's available in the in the software repositories. Unless you dig in there and enable stuff, uh, you will notice that there is going to be some stuff missing uh, in KDE Neon. Whereas Kubuntu gives you the whole hog. Uh, no questions asked, no worries, mate. Now, in terms of uh, software that is included, uh, you basically get the standard KDE stuff and a few other bits and pieces, such as VLC as the default media player, good choice. Um, and you also get Cantata. Ah, Linux naming conventions are insane. Um, and LibreOffice and Firefox. Um, so they're not strictly sticking to KDE stuff like KDE Neon. And that's, I think, another sticking point. I think Kubuntu is just a little bit more open and a little bit more uh, uh, willing to put forward what it thinks is best for the user as opposed to just being a, a flagship for the K desktop. Oh, why do I keep calling it K desktop environment? For Plasma 5. Okay, so um, what I don't really like about uh, Kubuntu 
Honestly, there's at this point, there's not much that I don't like about it. Um, no. What I will say is that I, stability wise, I don't think I have encountered any major issues in the time that I have been playing around with it. Um, but having said that, I haven't been pushing it very far either. Um, so I guess stability, I guess we'll wait and see the the trade off that you make when you support so many, uh, you know, development libraries and so many different types of um, applications out of the box is that Ubuntu can very, very quickly get messy uh, and all the PPAs and all that stuff that you have running in the background after a while to get up to date software. That's going to be um, that's going to be where something like Kubuntu falls short. Um, and again, this is really just um, most of these quibbles that I have are, are specific to Ubuntu or release based distributions as a whole. Um, at right now, we're sitting at sort of almost the latest software, which is great, or at least the latest stable software, which is great. And because we have a long-term support release of Plasma combined with a long-term support release of Ubuntu, I think we'll be stuck with a nice stable system for quite a while. So absolutely, if you love KDE, if you love the, uh, if you love Plasma 5, if you love all the bits and pieces that come with um, Plasma 5 and you want to have that power, that customization, um, and... Uh, and I guess the modern tool set of Plasma 5, but you also want some stability and you don't want to have to touch your operating system or the core files that it runs on for many years to come, or at least a good three years, then definitely Kubuntu is uh, is worth checking out. And I would recommend Kubuntu, I suppose, stability-wise over KDE Neon. Um, but again, my experience with both Neon and Kubuntu has been pretty darn good. Um, but again, this is all very surface level stuff when it comes to integrating it into a network with where you've got shared network files or transferring stuff over Bluetooth or, um, or you know, that kind of stuff. I haven't really dug into it that deep. So your mileage is going to vary as per usual. But, um, but I like what I see. I'm at, Like I said at the top of the video, I'm much more excited about what is going on in the other desktop environments of Ubuntu than, uh, than Ubuntu itself. Is that weird? I don't know. Let me know what you think. KDE Neon versus Kubuntu in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Watching. Definitely check out the other reviews of this release season and I will catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.